praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in God's house this morning? Well, come on, why don't you rest to your feet as we begin this service, as we invoke the presence of God in this service. I want to ask you a question. Has God done anything for anybody oh, yeah. in this room? Yeah, yeah, Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. Wait on me. Hold on. Don't Y'all moving too fast already. Has God done anything for anybody in this room that you could not do for yourself? Come on, raise your hand. Make some noise in the building. Uh, y'all quiet over here. God ain't did nothing for nobody on this side over here. I got anybody in the middle. God paid the bill. You know you didn't have the money for it, but some way, somehow, even if you didn't have all the cash, they let you set up a payment plan to help you float on. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Somebody over here ever had $10 to last you a whole week? But somebody invited you out to lunch one day, your mama cooked dinner for you the next day, and somehow God stretched that ten dollars all the way to your pay. I ain't got no help. Y'all always have money. Anybody ever been sick in your body and didn't know the doctor gave you a bad report, said it wouldn't work out in your favor? But as you went along praising God, somehow, some way, God healed your body. He dried up cancer. He raised low blood and brought down high blood and regulated your diabetes. And all of a sudden, you turned around. I ain't got no help in the building. I came to have church. Anybody ever been messed up in your mind? You wasn't thinking right? You couldn't figure things out? You couldn't get no peace in the midnight hour? You, you drank tears for water. You didn't know how you was going to fix it. Your heart was broken and tore up. Your emotions was all over the place but somehow and some way God stepped on the four corners of your mind and said peace peace I ain't got no help in this place today God stepped on the four corners of your mind and said peace be still when people that said they would love you your entire life turned around and walked away from you but God said I'm still your closest spot I ain't got no help here have you ever tossed and turned all night long? Didn't know which way you was going to handle it. But by the time you looked up, God already sent the answer. Well, if you fall in any one of those categories, this ain't going to be hard today. I want you to raise those both of those chocolate hands in the air. And for the next 30 or 45 seconds, I give you permission this morning. I give you permission this morning. I can go on you to lose your mind and tear your whole row up. Open your mouth up and magnify the God of your salvation. Give him everything you got. 30 seconds. One, two, three. Let's go. Come on. Oh, y'all too quiet over here. I don't see nobody magnifying him. If he ever made a way out of nowhere, open your mouth up. Come on. If he ever mended your broken heart, you ought to magnify him. If he ever made a way out of nowhere, you ought to lift up your hands in the sanctuary and just put thank you on repeat. Thank you for food. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for being a roof over my head. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my confidant. Thank you for being a restorer of my soul. Thank you for being my soul reviver. Thank you, thank you. My prop while I'm leaning. Bridge over troubled water. Shelter in a time of storm. Thank you for being my all in all. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for never leaving. You never left me. You never left me. You never, ever, ever, never, you never, ever, never left me. And I want to tell you, thank you. Father, we glorify your name for being so consistent in our lives. We magnify your name for being our bread. Thank you, God, for always loving us in spite of how we acted, in spite of what we did, in spite of what we're saying. Thank you for sending your son to die on our hands. God, have your
your way in this service. Strictly your people, even now. We magnify your name because there's nobody like you nowhere. And we stretch out on you today and tell you to have your way. Sing your word through our pastor. Let them preach with power and clarity. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Thank God. Amen. Come on, give God praise. This morning's hymn is at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Come on, clap your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Words gonna be on the screen for you. Here we go. At last, at last, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote? Would he? That same That same For such a word. For such a word. with the voice of triumph for the Lord most high is terrible he is a great king over all the earth he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet he shall choose our inheritance for us the ex excellency of Jacob whom he loved Selah 
God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord, the word of the Lord is already blessed. Oh, and now I am happy. Oh, the cross this morning hallelujah let the glory of the lord let it rise in the building today let the praises of the king let it rise in the building i just need you to do your hands like this and just let it rise let it rise lord let your glory let your glory rise let your glory rise let your glory rise hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah I'm going right here. Let the glory of the Lord yeah. rise among us. Yeah. Let the glory of the Lord hey. rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Everybody, come on. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord come on. Rise among us. Yes, sir. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise. Rise 
to be inspired and only infallible written word of God our belief concerning God we believe that there is one God eternally existent in three persons God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit our belief concerning the church we believe in the blessed hope which is in the rapture of church of God which is in Christ at his return our belief concerning sin we believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance, faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and being baptized in water. Our belief concerning salvation. We believe that the regeneration by Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. Our belief concerning Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing in prayer. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. We believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. Our belief concerning sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Now look at your neighbor and say, that's what I believe. Morning, Sunday morning blessings, my star in St. James. Please join me as we recite our mission statement. Our mission is to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ while serving our community in a holistic ministry by touching mind, body, and spirit, producing true believers who are rooted in the word, renewed through the worship and teaching into the world by yielding to God our time, talent, and temple. Now let it be known that we are two churches on one mission. Amen. Christian saints, and yes, you, our online family and friends, we welcome you all to Bright Star Church Chicago and St. James Ministries Church of God in Christ, where our pastor is the one and only, the only one, Superintendent Pastor Christopher T. Harris Sr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here at Bright Star and St. James, we are lifting the Savior through loving saints with lights that shine. 
Our church is currently housed in Kenwood Academy High School, located in the very heart of High Park. The address to this location is 5140 South Blackstone Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, 60615. You can reach both churches by dialing 773-373-5220. When you get an opportunity, why not help us spread the love of God by sharing today's services? And if you are visiting us on any of our social media platforms, please let it be made known in the comment section below so Bright Star and St. James can love on you. And if you're visiting us today and you're in the building, please, won't you stand? Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we get on our feet, Bright Star and St. James? Everybody, on your feet, go find somebody to love on. You may be the first person that gets a hug today. Well, your brother and your sister is here to encourage you and to lift you up and to tell you it's so good to see you. Welcome to Bright Star and St. James, where we're serving the Lord. One mission, come on. The Jesus in me, the Jesus in me, the Jesus in me, the in me, the Women's History Month. This is Nada Wheatley reporting for Bright Star and St. James. We warmly welcome all visitors. We want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming. And to our online viewers, thank you for tuning into our service. We ask that you please share our service on social media. Our goal is to reach 400 shares and we're depending on you. For more information about our church, you may visit us at stjamesministrychicago.com or brightstarchurchchicago.com. You've seen the news. You've seen social media. With current events, we need prayer now more than ever. Join us for our Zoom prayer call every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. Prayer begins at 6 a.m. and you can join us by dialing in or by using the Zoom link. Let's come together to pray for each other. On Good Friday, March 29th, Bright Star in St. James will be having its baptism service. If you are interested in becoming a candidate for baptism, you must register and participate in our baptism class, which will be held Monday, March 4th 
at 7 p.m. via Zoom. For additional information and to sign up, please contact us at baptism at brightstarkojic.com. Join us this week from March 5th to March 8th for the 6th Jurisdiction of Illinois Annual Workers Meeting Conference at the new location, Life Center Church of God in Christ, 5500 South Indiana Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Experience powerful messages, uplifting worship, and a great word. Service starts promptly at 7 p.m. Be there. Attention members of Bright Star and St. James, the Fine Arts Department is in the process of developing our Easter production, and we want you. If you are interested in participating in a non-speaking role or assisting with production, please contact Minister Cicely Anderson or Minister Larry Jones to sign up and to receive additional information. We look forward to hearing from you. Women of divine perfection should exemplify the human form of God's reflection, should walk in such a light that darkness is under subjection. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, should always be our confession. See, there's no question. Our worth is far above rubies, clothed in strength and honor with a presence that's aromatically soothing. Our children call us blessed because wisdom is our beauty. Saving nations, delivering our people from extermination like Queen Esther because that's our duty. I need a praise break. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I don't know about you all, but I feel much better. Because blessed is the woman that makes the Lord her trust for her faith is not measured. And blessed is the woman who stands in the gap for strongholds because serving God is her pleasure. And blessed is the woman that makes her voice his praise. Salvation is treasured, interceding without any pressure, fearfully and wonderfully made is her character. Able to manage three kids and two jobs with no car, but still got a praise in her laughter. See, she walks light as a feather, but have enough weight in her worship to make demons scatter. Whether she's single, married, or previously battered, there's enough word in her soul to get caught up in the rapture. See, her beauty is captured in the mind of her heart. No need to settle for less, just delight yourselves in God. So no good thing is he withholding while we are boldly submerging our faith during this purging. And we receive wisdom, so our trust is in Roman to anyone who we perceive as a man. Only going to God when we need him so we have in spiritual one night stand. See, that wasn't in his plan. Not even a thought by far. We need to be so hidden in Christ that if a man wants to seek you, make him first seek your God. Request, there's no talking, walking, eating, or chewing gum in the sanctuary while the word is going forth. If you are asked to relinquish your seat for our disabled or elderly, we ask that you please cooperate. If you are tuning in online, we ask that you please share our service. When you are prompted to give, we ask that you go to our church website and click on the giving tab. Pay by Zelle, Cash App, or use our text to give option. We appreciate your cooperation. You heard your church announcement, so please govern yourselves accordingly. This has been Nada Wheatley reporting for Bright Star and St. James. Who run the world, girls? Who run the world, girls?
sanctuary or whether you're watching online it's prayer time we have to give him some praise we offer praise hallelujah if you're not coming down won't you stand for prayer it is prayer time 
They said, he is worthy of all the glory, all the honor, worthy of all praise. He's all knowing. He's all seeing. He's all powerful. He's everywhere present at the same time. We offer him praise. If anybody can fix our situation, if anybody can handle your circumstance, if anybody can turn it around, it's the God that we serve. We offer him praise. God be God in this place. Not Asha. We offer you praise, God. We won't throw a pity party. We might as well throw a praise party because the game is already fixed. Your victory is already secured. Your breakthrough is happening with every hallelujah. Your turnaround is happening with every thank you, Jesus. I just believe right now that in this circle of prayer, you can just wave your troubles away. Bye-bye troubles. Bye-bye sickness. Bye-bye sorrow. Bye-bye sadness. We offer in praise instead. And Father, those who are tuning in and those who are at the altar, we want to let you know, oh God, that you are the one true and living God. And beside you, there is no other. We thank you, God, that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, your name is worthy to be praised oh god some trust in horses some trust in chariots but i will trust in the name of the lord god we don't come to the altar empty-handed we're not tuning in online empty-handed we're bringing you something oh god just like you told us to we're bringing our burdens we're bringing our heartache we're bringing our pain and we lay it before the altar, knowing that once we lay it down, we empty ourselves so you can fill us up. Fill us up, Lord. Fill those empty spaces. Someone here is suffering from the loss of a loved one. Fill that space, oh God. Someone suffering from depression. Let them release it and fill it up, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we offer you praise. You told us to take our yoke upon it. Learn of me. For your burden is easy. Thank you, God. Now, God, we already say that you are everything. And beside you, there is nothing more. We're asking, God, that you would bless this service. That you would bless our pastor, Superintendent Christopher T. Harris. Go before him now, God. Make smooth, easy, and successful his way. Now, God, as we lay these things before the altar, we pick up your goodness. We pick up your glory. We pick up your righteousness. We pick up things the way that you would have us to pick them up. Shape us and mold us as only you can do. And we will be so careful to give you all the praise. We're going to start right now. We're going to give you all the praise. God, we're going to start right now. We might not see the victory right now, but we're going to give you the praise right now for the victory. We're going to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor as we go back to our seats with the praise. Every clap of your hands brings your victory closer. Every hallelujah you shout brings your victory closer. Every glory to God brings your breakthrough closer. We leave this altar expecting miracles. We leave this altar expecting victory. We leave this altar expecting breakthrough. We leave this altar expecting a turnaround. In the name of Jesus, that all-powerful name, that wonderful name, the name that's above every name, strengthen that name, breakthrough in that name, power in that name, turn around in that name. It's in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. Break every yoke. Destroy every yoke. Break every chain. Lift every burden. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, and we'll be careful once again to give you every bit, every ounce, every iota, everything we got. We give it to you, God. We don't want it no more. You take it, God. You turn it around, God. You fix it. You handle it. Take it, God. You can have it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Sit down. What a mighty God we serve. Just lean on somebody. I said, lean on him as a neighbor. I'm thoroughly convinced that God's about to open a door. Now open your mouth if you know he's going to open the door. Clap your hands, put a little high on me. Sit down. It's a great church. Y'all make Sunday morning worth the trip. God is amazing. Those that love God and know He loves you back, give God a shout right now. I got a testimony. And I don't know if y'all are sitting next to somebody that like testimonies. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, God has done more for me than the devil has done to me. Clap your hands if that's your testimony. Some of y'all sat next to people with the attitude. I'm not into pumping and priming people. Yes, sir. But I'll be honest, I'm going to talk to y'all since y'all came to have church. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I didn't know y'all would act like that. And all that he's done for me. Oh, y'all came ready over here. My soul cries out. If my soul cry out, 
My mouth can't stay shut. When I start thinking, I start thinking. It just automatically happens. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him to neighbor. We don't have to beg you for thinking. If you just start thinking that he paid your bills in January, February, that means he got to do it in March, April, May, June, July. Wait, y'all ain't, is there anybody thinking about all oh, that you did not deserve? Give him a shout just one more time. Sometimes all you need is a snapshot. And I'm not asking y'all to praise him for the next 30 seconds for what did happen. I want you to think about what did not happen. I did not die. I didn't have an accident. I didn't get put out. I didn't lose the company. I didn't lose my mind. Those that are thankful for what did not happen, I dare you to praise them. I dare you to praise them. I dare you to praise them. I dare you to give them glory. Does anybody in here believe God's given to do something crazy? Touch somebody and say, dance in advance. Dance, dance. Dance in advance. Shout in advance. Give them glory in advance. Give him praise in advance. Don't wait till it happens. I just need a thinker that will become a thinker. If you don't want to dance, you got to clap. Tried to get you. Tell your neighbor it did not work. Everything the devil threw at you, it did not work. Every trap he set, it did not work. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. I need a praise around. Those in the balcony know. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. When he tried to make me lose my mind, made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it Y'all don't want me to shout. The survivors, I need y'all to dance. Every survivor, I need y'all to dance. You better get up at the house. You better get up at the job. And if you're on Facebook, say God made it fail. Tag some people that you know under attack. Tell them God made it fail. The layoff, God made it fail. The repossession, God made it fail. The hospital visit, God made it fair, He made it fair, everything that the devil tried, God made it fair, God made it fair, He made it fair, everything the devil tried, God made it Oh! <laughs> 
the struggle and in the midst of the problem I said though you slay me I'll still trust you all of the days of my appointed time Sunday is important to me because every week that I make it is evidence it was a week that I made it. Can I say it again? Every week that I make it is evidence that's a week that I made it. Sometimes a day can feel like it's killing you. Sometimes your week can make you feel like you ain't going to survive. But just put those hands together if you're glad you made it. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. He is amazing. We make no apologies here for the praise that we give. For those that are watching us on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. For those that are watching us on Facebook, we are so glad. I pray that you would do me a favor. Take your phone out real quick and go share the service on our page. Today, I pray that we would reach a goal that we can set and break it every single week. Go to our church, Bright Star Church Chicago page, our St. James Ministry Chicago page, and share the service right now so those who are in your sphere of influence can come. Now, you share when you're at the club, you share when you're at the party, you share when you're at the store, you share when you wherever you are. And don't get to church and be like, I don't want to share. Come on now. Don't do God like that now. This is the good news. You get to share it with other people. You get to share a song you didn't have to sing. You get to share a sermon you didn't have to prepare. But you get to share the service that you are a part of because you are an integral part of what God has done. And you are certainly an integral part about, of, of what God is getting ready to do. Let me just tell y'all something. Nobody has to come to your church. Not the members or the visitors. But when you take time to put on your clothes, do your hair, Shine your head, whatever you have to do. <laughs> I'm grateful. Ain't nobody got to do that. And so we are so grateful that you come here. Now, first of all, let's do this. 
every member of these churches raise your hand oh my god would y'all clap for all of these people come on now clap clap for yourself come on thank y'all for coming to church today for those that have tuned in online we thank you and wait watch this every visitor in here we want to do a little something special for you i asked them to raise their hand but if you're a visitor i want you to raise your body we want to see you we want to acknowledge you stand on your feet watch them go crazy for y'all oh y'all come on do better come on y'all show some love for all these visitors which section is the most grateful they sat in your section slap them a high five come on give them a chico stick or something we are so grateful that y'all came to, came to hang out with us fellas i'm still gonna do it and i need y'all to know that it's really really kind it's really kind when people are nice enough uh, to come to your church. And so we don't want y'all to come anytime. We really prefer y'all come. Clap your hands one more time and they might come back next week. We are so grateful. Um, let me just share this with you. Uh, Joe, can I do it? Is that cool? All right. I just want to share this with you all. Uh, just, just hit me with that a little bit. I just want to testify. Um, I don't know if y'all will go with me. Let me hear that, Aaron. Psychologically, emotionally, financially. I'm going to preach about some fellas that will say this. Got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. Had some ups and some downs, never to the ground, but I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. Y'all sing with me. Come on. Got a story to tell about some things that I've been through, but I'm healed. Come on, in your heart. Oh, I'm healed. Sing the next part. God has touched me. God, God has touched me. Delivered. Delivered. Come on. He set my soul free. Come on. My heart is in. I'm whole again. I'm whole again. Don't take my fall. Can I get y'all to sing with me? Got my liberty. Disappointment. Disappointment. I am here. Say it again, say it. 
Some of y'all saying, I ain't healed yet. You better prophesy. You better speak it into existence. Already feeling better. Already feeling better. Already feeling better. Anybody here? Already feeling better. I say it again. Already feeling better. Already feeling better. Anybody feeling a little bit better? Already feeling better. Oh. Already. Get you somebody grab and start stepping with them. Come on. Come on. Dance your way out of depression. If you don't know how to step, just grab him and two step. Look at these religious people. I can't believe they dancing in church. You better be glad I ain't dying in church. Clap your hands. Come on. Already feeling better. make you smile again. We got to go. Get your Bible. Sit down. That's it. Stop it all. Clap. Clap your hands. I just want to sing it. (laughs) 
They like, do they sing too much over there? First of all, we can sing. You can get mad all you want to. I'll be hitting you in the face. May have some scars. I wish a ninja would tell me stop singing. May have some scars. Circumstances say, uh, Disappointment, disappointment, disappointment Oh, I feel better Things are bound to get better Can I get you on the Things are bound to get better Come on, snap your fingers and things are about to get better. Lift your voice and things are about to things are about to get better. CJ, just for you. Things are already better. The hand over there waving. I see you over there with the fan. Things are already better, better. better. Y'all get your Bible. Hold your Bible up. Hold your Bible up. Oh, 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 oh. Hold your Bible up. Say this is my Bible Say I am what it says I am Your turn I have what it says I have Can I hear y'all to say Do what it says I can do. You better do the run. <laughs> oh my God! We gotta stop. We gotta quit. Clap your hands for a good shot. I'm telling the presiding bishop, y'all was church in here stepping. that dancing in here. I, I, saw, I saw I saw Mother Harrington over there. All the church mothers over there pop locking. Y'all deep people make me sick. <laughs> they, they're, gonna, they're gonna be real mad when they find out I'm a house head. I just like, I just like house music. I'm from Chicago baby. All right, let's work. Uh, hear, hear what your Bible say. <laughs> I just play too much. Hey, it was we we gotta go because y'all y'all don't let me finish sermons here, and I'm grateful. Now they got a praising church here. But uh, there was ten lepers, ten lepers, and these fellows were all together in the lonely place. And when you're reading your Bible. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 11, 12, and 13 says, It came to pass as he went, Jesus, to Jerusalem. He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. We've been talking about that for a couple of weeks, and now I get to move on. And he, as he entered into a village, a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Ten men that were lepers. Ten fellows. And they all had leprosy which stood afar off. I just want to pause for a moment that even in the midst of their sickness, I won't get stuck here because we got stuck here two weeks in a row. Even in the midst of their sickness, and I want to make sure you see 
in verse 12, they were sick, but they stood afar off. You know what? You know what I love? If, if they were sick and they stood afar off, I didn't make it up. That means their sickness didn't lay them out. They were still standing. And I want to talk to 50 of y'all in here that got a circumstance, but you're still standing. You got a sickness, but you're still standing. Got a struggle, but you're still standing. Going through hell and high water, but you're still standing. Would you applaud whoever's next to you for still standing? I'm still standing. Now, and then the Bible says in the same exact verse that it was ten fellows that were lepers. They stood afar off, verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, they lifted up their voices. Wait a minute. So their leprosy had not shut them down. And for 30 people that know how to respond, their leprosy didn't shut them up. They still raised their voices. And do you not know that the plan of the enemy is to get you quiet? And the reason the enemy tries to get you quiet is so he can hear, you can hear every lie he's going to tell you about your circumstance. But sometimes I get loud just to shut the devil up. Because whenever he brings me a lie, I'm going to give him the truth. I just want 30 people. I don't need 31 because I'm number 31. But if I could get 30 people to raise your voice loud right now just to let the devil know that you ain't dead. Just to let the devil know that you ain't in a grave. Just to tell the devil you tried everything that you could but I refuse to allow you to shut me down and you sure enough ain't going to shut me up. They stood afar off and they lifted up their voices. Here it is. Here it is. I want you to understand the difference. The text says that they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, wait a minute. Please hear me. They were loud. But this sound was not a loud sound of praise. It was a loud sound of petition. Because you can get in such a circumstance till you can't help but through petition cry out to God and said, I need something that I ain't never had before because I'm in something that I ain't never faced before. And can I tell you, when you get down to your lowest common denominator, when you feel like you are close to grave clothes being put on you, it'll make you pray a little bit different. I, I just need somebody. Is there anybody here ever been desperate in a bad situation that you knew your resume couldn't get you through it or to it? You knew that whoever you had to call on couldn't help you out and you start crying out to God, if I need anybody in this season of my life, I got to get God's attention. And the only folks I want to raise your voice this time are the folks that need God to do something in the next 30 days. I'm... You better get his attention. And don't you sit there quiet like you don't need something from God. I'm talking about the folks that are desperate enough to say if my neighbor don't get his attention, I'm going to cry out. This was a loud cry of petition. Now check it out. Key that you get this. Every parent in this room, raise your hand. Let me tell you something. 
You know what's cold about parenting? Is there is a voice mechanism in your spirit. It's a sound identifier. And I don't care if there's 50 kids in a room crying. When you hear your child's voice. It's something about their voice that connects to your ear where you are able to recognize your child's voice. And I'm going to ask your whole row to shout one more time. Oh, but I want you to know that their voice is not going to make God hear them over you. Why? Because you are his child. And I need every child of God that needs your daddy's attention, send up a shout now that'll let your daddy hear you. Father, come see about us, but make sure you see about me. Get your daddy's attention. He can hear you. If you keep shouting, he's gonna respond. If you call him the right way, he'll work on your behalf. Not this week. But I'm telling somebody that's shouting in the next 24 hours. You better grab your brother's hand. Grab your sister's hand and tell them a 24 hour turnaround. I'm See if they're shouting. See if they're praise God. Your daddy is coming. Your father can hear you. He's coming. heard you and when he when he do it I need y'all to put it on social media I'm gonna know exactly what you're saying you ain't got to say much you ain't even got to get a whole testimony just say he heard me again <laughs> Woo! he heard me again ah, he heard me again and when he hears me, he responds. And they were in the lonely place. They were in a lonely place, but they were not in a quiet place because they were shouting. They were raising their voice saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I, I, I want to I just say this, and we're moving completely off this section. When you really, when you really need God, you, you, don't, you don't just call him for you. When you really need God, uh, come on, I see you, Diane. On, uh, I see you on YouTube. I, 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 see, I see you, Teresa. I see you, Vivian. I see, I see you, uh, Sharice. I see you uh, on these uh, social media platforms. I, I see you, Bernadette. Thank you. Thank you for your witness. When you, when you really need God, you don't be selfish. You be like, if you going to come, don't just have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. And can I just find my praise row up in here? What if I told you he finna give it to all y'all? I dare you look to your right and your left and see if you can find the praise and say all of us, all of us. All. He ain't gonna just pay my bills. He's paying all of us his bills. He ain't just gonna open the door for me. He, he opened the door for all of us. All. Look at your neighbors and all of us. What? And what should your row be doing right now if he's going to bless your row right now? If, if all of us are going to get blessed, all of us are to praise. Now, now I'm done with that section. Move on. And we, don't, we don't just see the lonely place, but I want to move on today. I, I want to move on today. Um, <laughs> okay. Ten lepers see Jesus coming and they start yelling out, Hey, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And, and do you not know, um, if they were a ways off because they were secluded from the rest of society, because if you had leprosy, you had to be put outside the camp. 
And I want to tell y'all this. Please don't act up, but we got to move on. That's why I'm bringing my voice down so y'all can chill. They put them outside the camp. Y- y'all, y'all with me? They, they put them outside the camp and say, all y'all sick, so all y'all got to get out. They put them outside the camp. And I want to tell y'all that God told me this week, you know, I don't say nothing. I don't say God said it if he didn't say it, but I'm going to tell you, he said it. He said, this is the year that I'm blessing outsiders. I'm, I'm excited. This is the year he's coming to see about outsiders, people who got put out of stuff, people who are not included into things. He is, he's, I'm talking to y'all here today. This the year, this the year that he's coming to see about folks who have been excommunicated. Those who got put out the clique, those who got put out the club, those who got put out the committee, those, those who don't get invited no more. He said, great. The reason I'm coming to see about you is because here it is, your shout, they left you out. And anybody in here that got left out, put out, or cut out, you ought to shout, this is your year right now. 2024 belongs to you. And there are some folks that's going to tell you, I'm sorry that I didn't include you. Because they're going to see so much favor on you. So they're going to invite you back. But I'm going to tell y'all what the Lord told me to tell you. Nope, don't go back. Because if you didn't want me when I had nothing... You don't get to get me when I get my stuff. Talk to me. If you didn't want to be with me when I was down, you sure ain't hanging with me when I come back up. Because guess what? I'm going to bounce back. I just need somebody that feel a bounce back in your spirit. Don't slap on my high five. Just point to somebody and say, I'm going to bounce back. Yes, I am. I'm going to bounce back. So I want to say to all the folks that's quiet in this season of my life. I ain't going to forget. Because you know, folks will step back to see what's going to happen. Sorry. No destructive show over here. <laughs> Sorry. Because the Lord's going to disappoint your expectation. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to come out of that thing and you're going to be singing with John P. He said, I made it out. I made it out all right. Thank you, Lord. You didn't leave me or forsake me. Thank you, Lord. Didn't let my enemy. I got to quit. So they said I sang too much right here. I made it out on rain. So I, I made it out. I made it out on rain. I, I made it out on rain. Just for you, I'ma do another line. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You didn't leave me, nor forsake me. That's it. So they had. You gotta ask the question. Uh, Jesus showed up, and they raised their voices. And and there are only two ways that they knew Jesus was able to fix them. There was only two ways that they were able to know that Jesus was able to fix them. You want them? Here it is. Either it was a messenger, watch this side shout, or a memory. Either a messenger. 
messenger. Somebody told them. Middle section, but hey, or a memory. They had seen him work before. And when you seen him work in the past, when you need what you saw in your yesterday to be done in your today, it'll make you raise your voice and say, I, I've seen you work before, God. And I just need to know if there are 39 people in here that have seen him work before, now is the time that you grab your neighbor and testify and say, I've seen him work. I've seen him. I've seen him work. I've seen him work. I've seen him heal. I've seen him give breakthrough. I've seen him turn things around. I've seen him pay people's bills. Can I get somebody to talk to me that have seen him work? And, and, and your life, your faith is developed from either a message, from a messenger, or a memory. Now, why does God use both? Because sometimes those who hear a message, it's hard for them to believe because they have no past point of reference. So when you have no, y'all, would y'all please behave? When you, you see, I bought my voice down, Dr. Sims. I'm trying to see if they'll, okay. When you have no point of reference, I'm going to try this, Todd. I need them to behave. When you have no point of reference, you be so in tune to the message. And it doesn't get you excited. Because you're trying to take it all in. But let me tell you how cold God is. Balcony, just for y'all. Here it is. Uh, y'all too on this side. When you have no point of reference. And you're receiving the message. Here it is. He will sit you next to a point of reference. And while you sit and calm, they'll be all excited. Because God will put you next to a praiser that says, I know you hear what he's saying right now, but I saw God do that before. And it, it, is, there, is there anybody here that got a memory of what God did for you? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, uh, I hear the message, but the reason I'm shouting is I've got a memory. I saw God work on my behalf. Now slap somebody a high five and say, he's going to do it for you. He's going to. Okay. So they knew he could fix them because either somebody told them or they had seen them work in the past. So it, it's one or the other. The messenger said, I heard he works. The memory says, I've seen him work. Either way, faith gets built. Either way, it makes you call on him. Either way, you start saying, I believe God. And the moment you say, I believe God, you start saying, I need God. And the moment you start saying, I need God, you start calling on God. And is there anybody that has heard you believe you need and you're willing to call? Shout his name right now. So we see the lonely place. Let's talk about this next section and we're going home. So then the next thing we see in the text, right there in verse 14, put verse 14 in, on the screen. Uh, we see the Lord's provision. The Lord provides in lonely places. 
here, here it is. The Bible says in verse 14, and when he saw them, I could pause there. And when he saw them, ooh, I could get three weeks out of that by itself. Because it's one thing, balcony, y'all chill now. It's one thing for you to see him. But when you know he see you, the scripture says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for a heavenly home? When Jesus is my portion, a con. Stand, friend, is he? His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. So, therefore, I sing. Stop right there. Now, now wait. Does anybody here know he's watching over you? I want you to throw your Holy Ghost hands around somebody and tell him he's watching me. Come on, get that. He's watching me. He's watching. He's watching. He's watching. His eyes are on you. Things just turned in here. I wish you put the camera on other folk that look like they're glad that he watches over you. It's like, isn't it nice that his eyes are still on you? Isn't it wonderful that he's still looking after you? Have you ever asked yourself, how is everybody else getting robbed in Chicago and I ain't been robbed? His eyes are on you. How, how they breaking in everybody else's house but they ain't came to my door? His eyes are on me. How is everybody else getting shot but I'm still here? His, how is everybody else getting laid off? But... Sorry, I had to take a personal moment. Just tell your neighbor he's still watching you. He's still. And the scripture says, I lost all my time. And
Well, and, and when he saw them, you know, we, we pass the miracle. The miracle of that statement is the second word. And when. I need you to know there is a time coming. Not when he's going to see you because he always sees you. Here is your shout. The time is coming when you going to see that he sees you. Because according to the text, he already saw them before he got to them. So it wasn't that he couldn't see them. The issue was they couldn't see that he could see them. Because when you feel you've been forgotten... When you feel you've been rejected. When you feel nobody's looking at you. You will believe that the actions of man reflect the actions of God. So just because people forget you, God didn't forget you. Just because people ignore you, God does not ignore you. Just because people won't look at you. It doesn't mean that God ain't looking at you. Just because people won't help you don't mean God won't help you. I need you to just tell yourself, not your neighbor, this is just for you. Say, he can see me. He, he can see me in the struggle. He can see me in pain. He can see me in court. He can see me in the hospital. He can see me at the job. He can see me at the crib. This, I just want to remind you that. And when the text says he saw them. So he saw them spiritually. That's why he came. But he came to see about them naturally. See, the Lord's provision. I'm going to let y'all pay attention. Because whoever talking to you can't help you when you're in trouble. Sometimes you got to tell people who talk to you all service, not right now, baby, not right now. Just saying. And just hold that thought. And just let, let him preach. Now, let me just say this. And when, and when he saw them, because I, I want you all to get this in your spirit. Pro, provision is not always the Lord blessing you. Provision is not always the Lord giving you something. Provision is when he's looking at you. Okay, Linda. Linda. There is something. Greeters, y'all with me? There is something. There is something about knowing that your parent is looking at you that makes you feel protected. There is something about eye contact that makes you feel secure. Listen, I've been honest with you all that I went to one year of college and I can't say I was the most educated person in the world then or now. Now, I'm being honest with you. And, but, man, if you think about trauma as an adult, I mean, I got nine minutes left. Boy, I got some memories of trauma as a child. And once you become an adult, it make you start going back looking at how God covered you as a kid. Can I get a wit? Can anybody here look back over your life as a child and be like, how in the world did I survive that as a young person? Y'all didn't got quiet up in here, huh? 
as an adolescent, as a teenager. And God, for y'all that will behave well, God was building up your memory bank as a child. And that's why, as an adult, the people who, soon as you say, when I think of the... You see how they started all the man? What's happening, the reason they raised their hand immediately is because their mind started going back. And the scripture puts it that, this way. I don't know if y'all going to shout. Therefore, we draw water out of the wells of salvation. We draw water out of the wells of salvation. That means you got to dig down there and pull it up. And I want 30 of y'all right now. I said 30 twice already. Okay, 55 of y'all. I want 55 of y'all. I want 55 of y'all to dig down in your memory bank and find something that God did for you between 0 and 10 and praise him right now. I did. I'm going to rock this building. Keep that going. Now add to that something he did for you between 11 and 20 years old. I I ain't find the right people. Now add something on top of that praise that he did for you from 21 to 30 years old. I dare you to do it now. I thought your praise would get louder. Add something that he did for you between 30 and 40 years old. Add another one from 40 and 50 years old. Add another one from 50 to 60 and then six. You can say all my life. Been good to me. Grab your neighbor, shake him and rock him. I said, rock him and shake him. And say, neighbor, all of my life, God's been good to me. Now shout like you're grateful. And so he was looking at me when my mother got raped and wanted to abort me. He was looking at me when I was born blind. He was looking at me when I had asthma all my life and almost died many times, but breathed into my lung. Y'all quiet. He, he, was, he was looking at me. When I was raised up in the projects and they were shooting people, y'all. Y'all think they killing people now? You better go back to some of us that's over 40. Come on, they wasn't even counting how many people they was killing back then. Y'all done got quiet up in here. He, he was looking at me when I was on the bus. With tokens and transfers. He was... He was, he was looking at me when I had to take my mama's book of food stamps to the store to get some food in the generic aisle. He was looking at me when I had to wear hand-me-downs. Y'all didn't talk. Y'all didn't, didn't got quiet. When what I got for my birthday this year was what my brother got for his birthday last year. He was looking at me when I was getting beat up as a shorty. He was looking at me when I didn't have a good education, but, but he still gave me a good job. He was looking at me. He was, if, and if he was looking at me then, okay, that list was too. He was looking at me when I was smoking weed. Yes, sir, I have did. Tell my pastor, you were smoking weed and did, as the kids say. He was looking at me when I was drinking my drink. This time it wasn't red Kool Aid alone. He was, he was looking at me when I went into places that I should not have gone. He was looking at me when I said things I should not have done. He was, he was looking at me when I hung with people I shouldn't have hung with. He was, and if he was looking at me then, he was looking at me, he was looking at me when I was sinning. Oh, y'all done got quiet over there. They ain't sinning, y'all. Hey, come on. Come on, sin section. Don't y'all leave me by myself. He was looking at me when I was cussing. Come on. He was looking at me when I was clowning. He was looking at me when I was doing stuff that I wouldn't want to end up on the screen. He was... He, he was looking at me, and if he was looking at me then, 
Oh, he was looking at me when I was having sex out of wedlock, making all them babies. He was looking at me. 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 He was looking at me when I was doing something. And if he was looking at me then, I know that he is. And here's what I'm simply trying to tell you. If he did it before, he can do it again. He's looking at you. You know what I just built up? I built up from my memory bank a message that says, no matter how bad you've been, no matter how bad you are, here is your clap. He never turned his head away from you. Oh my God, that, that's a shout all about. He never turned, he, y'all, there's some people that don't want to look at you just because you ain't wear the right outfit, but he never turned his head from, he, he could have turned his head, but he saw you. I close with this. Provision is not just him giving you money. The Lord's provision is he's looking at you. Because as long as he see me, I'm going to be all right. I, God, this is all I want to tell you today on this piece and we done. Uh, I'm so glad he's still looking at me. Listen, and God looking at you, this is the last piece. God looking at you can give you confidence. All right, let me just give you one of my childhood traumas and we out of here. Here it is. Uh, uh, um. You know, as, as I go, <laughs> Cecily going to be so mad at me for this. <laughs> and told her page out. It was a childhood trauma. When I was a child, <laughs> I wasn't so educated. One of my greatest traumas was this size. Is when I went to school on Friday. It's called a spelling test. I just need a witness up in here that remembers. Anybody get? There was nothing worse than walking into school on Friday and there go that dog on a little bitty strip of paper sitting on your desk. I mean, and the teacher was so mean on Friday. She spoke all week long, but Friday, she wouldn't even speak to us. No smile, no hug, just straight face. Go to your seat. Soon as you sit down, Spell those 20 words. John Vaughn, I'm finished after this. And, and, and this was traumatic for me. <laughs> I want y'all to look around. Those that are standing, spelling bees was tragic for them too. <laughs> it, it was traumatic. It, it was traumatic. And, and, and there's nothing worse. Watch this. There's nothing worse than knowing you studied, but you still feel incapable. There is nothing worse than feeling, shh, there's nothing worse than feeling prepared and expecting to fail. And we would have the spelling bee, and I don't know about y'all, but for me, I study and I can learn, but sometimes. 72 people going to get this. Sometimes it's not that I didn't learn and sometimes it's not that I don't have the knowledge but a test can wipe you out. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Boy, a test can make you forget everything you know. And the reason scripture can't come up to some of y'all right now is you're in the middle of a test, preach Harris. And when you're in the middle of a test, it'll make you forget that your God shall supply all of your needs according to you. The middle of a test will make you forget that he was wounded for your transgression and bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is laid upon and with his stripes, the middle of a test can make you forget what you know. 
So we got to go. And so, so I would take the test, and I got good at it. And I would pass 70%. Next week, 75%. Next week, 80%. Next week, 90%. And then finally, I started hitting them 100%. This is a true story. At Carter G. Wilson School, which is now uh, the Turner Center. I, uh, <laughs> let me say it again. The school I failed in. Now I run it. Talk to me in here now. The building that I learned in. Now other people are learning and working in it. Y'all didn't got quieter. Yeah, okay, okay, you missed your shout. What I just told you is the places that you lost, you're getting ready to win there. And then, here it is, here it is, we got to go. And I got good at it, so honey, so I got so good at it, I'm sending y'all home after this, I swear. Um, I got so good at it, till my teacher put me in the spelling bee. So... So when the teacher Elijah put me in the spelling bee, uh, I, was, I was ready, but I got nervous. I got nervous because it was a big old crowd, just like this one. And they would call everybody name. And, and when they would call everybody name, the parent would be like, that's my baby. <laughs> Woo! And I didn't have a daddy. So when they called my name, because Missionary Harris was habitually late, <laughs> she wasn't there either. So nobody clapped. <laughs> See how God made up for my trauma? Thank y'all for that. No, nobody clapped. And because, watch this. And because I had no support, Because I had no support, I wasn't prepared to do well. So they went all the way down the line, and when they got to my word, I never forget this. This is a true story. I ain't making it up. When they got to my word, they said Chris Harris, and they called out my my word, and I froze. But when the man who was the only father that I knew, Dr. James Stovall, the founder of Bright Star. At that very moment, he walked in the room. And because my spiritual father was watching me, it built up confidence in me. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. And when you know your father is looking at you, when you know that your daddy can see you, it builds confidence on, I spell the stink out that word. And when I tell you at the end of the game, I won the spelling bee, it was because my daddy saw me. And the scripture says, and when... I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. And when he saw them, because the issue is not always him seeing you. The issue is sometimes you seeing that he can see you. I'm finished. I want to give y'all some good news. This is the week where you're going to see that he can see you. I mean, I'm talking about testimonies are getting ready to break out all this week. And you're going to say, my daddy, I can see that he see me. I, he, he, I, I can see that he see me. I can see that he see I need to pay this bill. I can see that he see that I need a new open door. I can see that he see I need some joy and some happiness. In my, I, need, I'm trying, I want you to tell your neighbor, you're going to see that he can see you. I want to pray for you. Who do I want to pray for? I know y'all got to go. But I want to pray for those. And if you don't have to leave, don't leave. If they ain't pulling your car, stay here. There's some people in here that really need to see that he can see you. Like, I knew I could spell. I just needed to see 
that my father could see me. Yes. Yes. I need the company. If I'm talking to you and you need this week, this month, this year to see that he can see you, would you stand so I can pray for you? I know it ain't everybody, but I just want to I just want to pray for the ones. I just want to pray for the ones. Would y'all pass out the communion cups real quick? Because I want you to stand with a communion cup in your hand. I, I want you to stand with a why? Because you're going to be holding covenant. Come on, just give it to them. Let them pass it down fast. Song said, the blood that Jesus shed for me, we getting up out of here. It'll never lose its power. I want you to know, the only reason he shed his blood on the cross is because he saw you. I mean, how in the world could a God see you 2,000 plus years later and say, I'm going to die for you now? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He saw, before you was in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you. And I'm going to pray while you hold your communion cup. Go and open it. Get it prepared. Don't take it yet. Those of y'all that are at the house, will y'all please go get you a cracker, go get you some juice. If you don't have all that at the house, go pinch off a piece of bread and get a little cup of water. Those that are watching online. The blood that Jesus shed plus years ago on Calvary oh the blood that today still give me strength from day to day it will never 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 lose its power Shh. Father today The reason I asked them to get their communion cups in their hand today is because they have in one hand the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This wafer represents that. But then in the other hand they have the blood that was shed for the remission of sin. So in our hands we hold covenant. The promise of salvation, the promise of deliverance, the promise of healing, the promise of redemption. We are holding evidence that you saw us from the foundation of the world. Yes, yes. And if you were looking at us then, we know that you're looking at us right now. So Father, I need you to show them this week that you see them. Yes. Let them see that you see them. Yes, By way of miracles. Let them see that you see them. By way of provision. Let them see that you see them. By way of protection. Let them see that you see them. By way of good news that's coming this week. Cover us. Keep us. Provide for us. Make ways for us. Deliver us. Continue to save us. Build us. Develop us. Deploy us. In the name of Jesus, show a miracle. Here, this is the week of good news. Father, we decree and declare this is the week of good news. We decree and declare this is a week full of good news. Oh, good news on Monday. Good news on Tuesday. Good news on Wednesday. Good news on Thursday. Good news on Friday. Good news on Saturday. Oh, but you don't have to wait till tomorrow. Start today. Let us leave out of here before we get in the car. Good news. Let us check the mail all week and say, good news. Let us get some notifications in our email that says, good news. So we decree and declare that you're going to show us that you see us. 
just like you saw the lepers in Jesus name somebody shout amen the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his precious blood as often as you do this you show forth his death and his suffering upon Calvary till he shall come again let us all commune together take your bread drink the cup of the vine As you carefully take your seat, they're going to come and give you those baskets. And you're going to put the cup in the basket, in the bag, whatever they give you. And make sure you're careful and get your offering ready. Because I know that we're getting ready to sow in a way that says we believe God to provide for us. It shall never, come on, it will never. It will never Never lose. It reaches. Oh, it reaches. If you're leaving, shh, please make sure you give before you go. Tithing up information is on the screen. We got to go. The giving opportunities, spotlights out. The giving opportunities are on the screen. And I hope those of y'all that are online and those of the, on the scene, on the screen, will make sure you give. Praying for you, Brother Phil. The one that's watching on YouTube. Listen. Shh. I need your attention. This week is our workers' meeting. And I want to make sure that you're there. Turn the stage lights off so they can see. Listen. How many of y'all get the church text messages? Raise your hand. All right. Hands down. How many of y'all do not? Thank you for your hand. Hands up if you do not receive church text messages. Those of y'all that are close to them, will you show them how to do it? There are two ways you can do it. Be added to subsplash. I'm going to ask y'all to sew as you go. But you can start giving now. You know where the swipe machines are. If you got need to swipe, please give. Envelopes, you should have an envelope. Shh. Bright Star in St. James, I want your attention. Brother Brown, trustees, elders, leaders, everybody, I need you all at workers' meeting this week. Our bishop has assigned me A lot of roles in helping him to rebuild the jurisdiction. Now listen. We were going to have workers meeting at our bishop's church, but it's too small. Even Bright Star is too small. I mean, all of us in here can't go back to the little Bright Star. Now listen. So we moved it to a larger venue, Life Center, on 55th and in Indiana. I need you all there. I'm preaching Tuesday night. Every man that's in here now, I need you there. Every woman, I need you there. Those that are watching online, I need you there. 
But not just Tuesday. It's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now notice, I am not talking to goats. I'm talking to sheep. And in this flock, if you're discouraging people from coming, you're not even a goat, you're a wolf. You should never ever encourage people to not follow their shepherd. And I'm asking all of you all, be there. Tuesday, I'm preaching. Let me tell you a miracle. You know, remember I preached Bishop Daniels, my coverings funeral, and his church, Holy Redeemer. Pastor Valerie Daniels is now the pastor there. You know, she's one of the owners of the Milwaukee Bucks. And she's pastor in that church now. And she and I talked. And she said, Pastor, we love you so much that Holy Redeemer, all the way in Wisconsin, is going to come and join six jurisdiction and we're going to be in your district. Y'all don't know when to clap. And she told me, Superintendent, we coming all the way from Milwaukee. And not only me, but do y'all know that 17 other churches are joining us this week from Milwaukee to be with us this week. And they say, we come in Tuesday and Friday, your night and Bishop's night. And she says, some of them are going to come Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday is our jurisdictional state mother's night. It's this Women's History Month. Women, y'all ought to fill that building on Wednesday because it's Women's Night. I think they wear white. So please come. We'll talk about it some more tomorrow. Thursday, Superintendent Rory Hood is coming. He's preaching. I want you to be there. And guess what? Our bishop is so amazing. He's going to feed everybody every night. I thought y'all would clap a little bit better than that. Now, Look at me. Look at me. That's okay, Bilal. Shh. It's okay. Offering is over. Listen, and guess who Bishop put in charge of all that? He did a me to me. Like what I do to y'all, be like, hey, get this done. Make it happen. He did it to me. So we got the church, made it local, made it close. It's right up the street. I called my godfather, Pastor T.L. Barrett. He gave us the church. I said, we need a bigger place. And I don't want to come to the school shh, and set up and tear down every night. I don't want to do that every night. Can we get the church? He was like, son, you can have it. You ought to clap for Pastor T.L. Barrett. So we got plenty of space. We got plenty of parking. And listen, our bishop starts on time, 7 o'clock, and gets you out by 9 o'clock. Every single night. Every. So I'm asking y'all to come. Now, of course I want you to be there on my night. I'm looking to see y'all. I'm preaching. I want to see. But the most important night of the week for me is Friday. We ought to make our bishop very proud. I will follow that man to Africa barefoot. That's how much I love my bishop. Raven, I want to see you there. Melton Brown, I want to see you there. All you, Elise. I want to see you there. I want to see all of you all at the church this week. What's the address? 5500 South. We got security. This whole security team, there's parking. They're going to tell you where to park. You good. Just show up and be on time. Now listen, dress for the day so you don't have to have the pressure to go all the way home 
and then come there. Dress for the day. Make it easy, and we're going to feed you every night. So I need hospitality team to help me. I need those of y'all that will serve and help me to serve people food, blah, blah, blah. In the morning, 6 a.m., we're going to be on prayer at 6 a.m. I'm taking this time to do this so you can get all the announcements. Tomorrow morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we are on Zoom prayer. What time? Stand on your feet. Time to go. I'm going to give you some more instruction. But I'm going to need some people to help us with hospitality. And we're going to tell you how to sign up during prayer in the morning. I want to tell y'all thank you for being a praying church. Because it's prayer that's pushing us to where we're going. When? Sister King, the children are going to be doing their Bible fair real soon. So we want to make sure you all know that's getting ready to come. We'll give you more information. But get the children ready. I'm so excited. Good Friday, we're going to have an Easter production. We're not doing the Holy Week revival the whole week. This is Holy Week. Remember Holy Week, we would normally do every single week. But I need y'all to do it. So please make sure. A couple weeks ago, I asked y'all to pray for Brother Dillard and his wife. He lost his nephew. And then last Sunday... A brother, I mean. What was his name? His brother passed away. And we prayed for you then, but I want y'all to point your hand toward them. I mean, back-to-back -back deaths. So, Father, cover and keep in the name of Jesus. Strengthen. This home-going service is tomorrow, and I'm asking you to be with them. Cover them. Keep them. In the name, keep them encouraged. Help them in their trauma. Let them know that you see them. And let them see that you can see them. In the name of Jesus, help us as a church to be a tangible support system. And not just them, but others who have lost loved ones and others who are going through and others who are sick. See about them. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What time? 7 o'clock. Don't y'all let me down. Dress up for church. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. And Bishop has made me heavily responsible. So Bright Star St. James, don't y'all embarrass me. Pretend I want to see y'all there. Those that can be there. If you ain't working, or if you ain't in jail. And even if you're in jail, I want you to tune in. <laughs> Join hands with somebody. If you want to join this church and you want to be saved and, and accept Jesus as your Savior, Run down to this altar as soon as we dismiss. And we will pray for you. Help you with salvation. And then we want you to join. Pray for the hands that you're holding right now. And that are near you. Hold their hand. And start praying for them out of your mouth. Come here young man. Come pray. Come on start praying for them. God please protect everybody that's here. Please cover them. And with your blood, God, please teach them and guide them and let them worship and praise you every single day, God. Let their families be safe. Let them be safe. Let them come home and go home. Let them, wherever they're going after this service, let them be safe. Let them go however they need to, God. Let, um, what's the name? Um, give them knowledge, give them power, and let them, just let them use their voice for your holiness and for you so you can prosper and so that you can help us. So let us help you, God. God, please let us be able to, to just teach others about you and let us be able to just love, love and respect everybody else that we, that we, um, that we, that we um, pass, God. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, hug somebody, tell them. See you on prayer in the morning, 6 a.m.